Hello, I'm Rong Xu uh, uh, from Google's uh, Compiler Optimization Team. He and I are here to discuss uh, uh, how we are using auto FDU and the uh to optimize Linux kernel. Today's presentation will divide into two parts. Uh, first, I'll discuss uh, uh, auto FDU. Following that, um, Heng will discuss uh, uh, how we further enhance the performance uh, using Propeller on top of the auto FDU. So uh, in the auto FDU part, we will discuss the core concept uh, and the experiment, experimental result. I also share some of the insight uh, 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 from our experience in able auto FDU, auto FDU in Linux kernel, my build system. So let's start it why, uh, to, uh, with why we are focused on Linux kernel. In data center, applications, oh. okay. yeah. applications are spending a, a surprising amount of time in kernel space. Uh, we look at, uh, we an analyze some of the top cycle consume, uh, kernel cycle consumers uh, in Google and found that they spend anywhere uh, from 17% to 60% of cycles uh, executing, executing kernel code. Uh, Fleetwire, on average, about 20% uh, of machine cycles are consumed by the kernel. So this is exclude, uh, after exclude uh, the idle times. So all this data clearly show that uh, kernel performance uh, is critical to overall application performance. So obviously there's a lot of work has been done to uh, uh, optimize the Linux kernel. So uh, one of the key optimizations in Google is to apply FDU build to Linux kernel. So, so what is FDU? FDU stands for Feedback Direct Optimizations. It leverage runtime insight for improved code gen. So the core idea is to uh, gather the profile information from the real uh, program executions and use this data to guide uh, the compiler optimizations. With this data, compiler also focus on optimizations that has been most uh, uh, impact based on the actual usage. FDU is proven to be effective for the world, uh, real world applications. In Google, uh, almost all the applications uh, from Android to Chrome to data, can, data center applications all use some variations of FDOs. So we can see that uh, it improves the uh, uh, iCache, ITL utilizations, and improves the branch performance. For real world applications, we can see up to 20% of improvement. Aside from the runtime improvement, it all, uh, FDU usually also reduces the code size, which is appealing to uh, many uh, applications. So there are two major kinds of uh, FDUs. One is instru instrumentation-based, the other is uh, uh, sample-based. So instrumentation-based FDU is the original FDU. Uh, it, uh, it is a three-stage compilation. So here's a workflow for the uh, kernel builds. Uh, the first stage, we have the instrumentation build to generate an instrumented kernel. Then we run a load test on this instrument kernel to get the profiles. This is the second stage. The third stage is to feed the profile back to the compiler uh, and redo the compilation to get the optimized kernel. So instrumentation-based FDU, uh, the profile capture every uh, branch uh, information when running the load test. So the profile is very accurate uh, at the point of instrumentation, and the performance is good. The other uh, advantage of uh, instrumentation-based FDU is uh, uh, there's no hardware requirement. Uh, the disadvantage of instrumentation-based FDU is uh, uh, the, we need some kernel support to set up all the counters and uh, dump the profiles uh, to the user space. So many of the kernel objects cannot instrument uh, 
for things like uh, before the page up, page table is set up, or boot time stuff. So we need to maintain a list uh, for, for this file list. Uh, the other thing is instrument binary is very slow. It can up to 10x slower than the non-instrument binary. So we cannot deploy this binary, uh, this kernel to the, in the production. So a key challenge for uh, IFDU is uh, uh, the load test. Uh, the user needs to ensure that the load, the, uh, load test uh, ref uh, actual, ac accurately reflect the uh, real usage, real world usage. If the load test is not representative, the compiler uh, is optimizing the wrong scenario. This will result leads to a, a suboptimal performance in the real production. So Google has been enabled the instrumentation based uh, uh, FDU for kernel since uh, 2011. So here is uh, the workflow for the auto FDU. We can see this is still a uh, three-stage compilation. The first stage, we build uh, a, a called a perf kernel. So perf kernel is uh, uh, we pass the, uh, we use the same, uh, we use auto FDU options, but without passing a profiles. So this will re result a, 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 a kernel that uh, with the same co uh, code generation as the non FDU builds, but with some extra debug info. This extra debug info will help a compiler to, to match the, uh, uh, the uh, profiles. The second step, we actually have two steps, two sub-steps. The first step is to generate the perf files using a perf command. The second step is to convert uh, the perf files to all FDU profiles. So compared with the instrumentation-based FDU, uh, AutoFDU has a very low overhead in profile connection. So we can deploy uh, this kernel to the production and uh, do a production, uh, production profile connection. So if we do the production level uh, 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 profile connection, uh, it's eliminate the concerns of uh, representative uh, of workload. So the disadvantage of uh, AutoFDU is uh, uh, AutoFDU cannot achieve the same performance as uh, instrumentation-based FDU. So if you use the same load test, uh, you will get uh, close performance, but not as good. And uh, it also needs uh, some hardware uh, support like LBR and the perf uh, support. Uh, so. The previous workflow is for uh, low test based auto FDUs. So if your binary is uh, a fast increment, uh, using a fast incre incremental release mode, uh, and you, ha you have uh, uh, infrastructure do the free white uh, monitoring, we actually like, uh, suggest to use the, this mode for auto FDUs. The basic idea is use early versions of uh, auto FDU optimized code to collect the file and the feed to current uh, uh, release. So this is what we call an iterative release mode for auto FDU. All the uh, user level auto FDU uh, uh, applications within Google are using this mode. So this is much user friendly to the um, user friendly than uh, instrumentation based FDU or the low test uh, auto FDU. Uh, of course, using this mode, you will see some like uh, mismatch. Uh, uh, there's a mismatch concern uh, issues between the release. But things ought have to do using relative uh, uh, line numbers relative to the uh, head of the functions. We find uh, this works pretty well as far as uh, your there's no major code refactoring your release. Uh, we think this mode will work well for uh, la, for a kernel release, for like uh, uh, at least for the kernel minor release. 
So uh, note that there are also some works uh, like in uh, like Google called undrifting, source undrifting work, would uh, help to mitigate these these issues, source uh, uh, mismatch issues. So we mentioned that uh, we need some hardware support uh, for auto-have deals. Uh, uh, more specifically, we need uh, like Intel LBR like the hardware support, uh, like AMD's BRS or ARM's ETM SPE. Uh, with these uh, hardware features, uh, we can uh, like uh, uh, reconstruct the program execute trace uh, more accurately. So, auto have you can also work on mode uh, based on the uh, simple instruction sampling, but you will not get the same performance. So we are not suggest uh, people to use that. So uh, LBR stands for last branch record. So it captured the uh, last taken branch uh, from the program, uh, program trace. So uh, with LBRs, so we can construct uh, like uh, uh, range, range tables and jump tables. Uh, and uh, together with the binaries debug information, we can uh, generate audible profile like this. I'm not going to get to the detail of this. Uh, there's offline tools to convert LBR data to profiles. Uh, these tools are called uh, create LVM perf or LVM perf gen. So people often ask uh, uh, what optimizations uh, uh, improve the performance uh, for FDO? Here we list uh, like uh, uh, three optimizations that has most uh, have the most performance impact. Usually have the most performance impact for FDOs. The first is function inlining. It removes the core overhead and enlarges the optimization scope. Uh, the inlining uh, with FDO is just better. It reduces the dynamic instruction counts. The result causes it is runs faster and smaller. The second optimization is uh, we call a basic block layout. It increases the branch fall through. Yeah, fall through is more efficient than the taken branch. Even the both are correctly predicted by the branch predictor. Fall through also groups more hot BBs tighter together. So this means the better eye cache and ITLB utilizations. The third optimization is, uh, is called uh, indirect call promotion. So it basically reduces indirect call, convert indirect call to direct call, and make inline possible. After all, in FDU is an infrastructure uh, uh, in compiler, compiler, compiler. So all the passes can make queries like uh, uh, what, what's the frequency of this basic block, what's the probability of this branch, these things will help the optimizations in general. So here is a list of uh, uh, optimizations that usually have the be help the FDU performance. Uh, of course, this is not a complete list. So in the next few slides, I'm, a, I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, experiment result with IFDU and OutFDUs. So how do we measure the performance impact uh, on auto-FDU and IFDUs? We use a combination of uh, micro-benchmarks and the uh, load test. Uh, for micro-benchmark, we started with the target micro-benchmark, like uh, uh, NEPR. So this is uh, uh, measured the network performance. This is area where auto-FDU really shines. So we also use the Unix bench to get the overall uh, the view of the kernel performance. For low test, uh, we use the one Google database applications. So with AutoFDU kernel, we can get 2.6% uh, improvement in user applications. This is all user metric. So for instrumentation-based FDU, we are getting 2.9% uh, improvement. So you, Yong Hong uh, from Meta help us to measure the uh, auto have your own meta, one of the meta uh, service. So they report about a 5% improvement for auto have uh, In contracts, uh, they are getting 6% of uh, instrumentation based FDU.
So here's uh, some kernel PMU stats. When we running the different kernel, you are using different kernel running the TCP RR benchmarks. So we can see that uh, the retired instruction got reduced for both AutoFDU and uh, IFDU. L1, iCache miss also reduced. So here the branch is the branch taken instructions. It's also uh, uh, reduced. So this means fall through is more, which is better, means uh, better control flow of, uh, optimizations. So this is uh, we call a, a instruction heat map. So the x axis uh, axis is the time. The y axis is the uh, 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 kernel address. So this plot shows instruction access over time. So we can see the uh, non-FDU cases; they have a pretty wide band of instructions. But for IFDU and RFDU, we have a much tighter bands. So you can notice that IFDU and RFDU uh, look different, uh, uh, like in this plot. Uh, the key difference lies between how they treat the, uh, the code without profiles. IFDU treat is as a code text, and RFDU uh, default treat as a, a normal text. So if if you change the compiler to use the same strategy, then they will generate uh, pretty much identical uh, heat maps. So uh, we have been working uh, to bring out of due support to kernel in the past few months. Uh, I would say this is. Uh, the relatively smooth journey. So we, the only thing major we need to do is to improve the offline tool to support the kernel image. So we are, haven't uh, found, encountered any uh, uh, compiler side bugs uh, for AutoFDU uh, to build uh, the kernel with AutoFDU. I think AutoFDU pipeline has been thoroughly tested uh, with the Google application. There's a thousand uh, or 10,000 uh, target uh, built with RFDUs. So of course, there are uh, things to be done for uh, RFD kernels, uh, the things like apply unique linkage name for static functions and uh, provide the kernel module support. Uh, the testing uh, is turns out to be most of the challenging part of the work. Uh, for compiler tunings, we need a fast and a reliable performance test uh, the other thing is uh, the how to uh, construct a, a, a benchmark that has a representative load test, uh, workload as a production. So uh, we have a, a good ideas how to, how to, uh, to know if this is, uh, workload is uh, representative or not. But even we, even we know this uh, benchmark is not representative, how to improve the benchmark to make it representative is still very challenging for us. So that's why we, we think AutoFDU is better uh, because you can collect profile directly from the production. So uh, here are some lessons um, we have uh, learned in, the, in, this, uh, during, uh, in this process. The first is uh, AutoFDU is easy to use in kernel. Uh, so we have uh, work on the uh, instrumentation-based FDU and AutoFDU, AutoFDU is just easier. It's, uh, uh, basically, you just need to turn on the options and uh, using <coughs> offline tools to convert the profiles. So when you do the uh, profile connection uh, for the out of view, it, you need to make sure that system in relatively high load. If the load system load is high, even you get the profiles, even you do a post processing of the profiles, uh, the performance, the result to kernel. Uh, will still be suboptimal. The third uh, is uh, uh, the profile from Intel machines works well on AMD machines. The crop platform support is pretty, pretty good. So uh, our preliminary test uh, uh, shows that the customer kernel helps uh, the performance. A customer kernel is uh, a kernel 
like optimized for specific workload. This usually will outperformance the kernel that uh, if you build a kernel with uh, combined uh, uh, the profile from all from uh, from uh, different profiles. Uh, the last thing is uh, LTO and the single LTO uh, works well with uh, IFDO and uh, AutoFDO. Uh, so if you enable the, them, you will get a better performance. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, I'm handing the talk to Hans to talk about the uh, propeller. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, I'll continue with uh, AutoFDO and the propeller building kernels. So is this, yeah, there. Oh, it's not and the test yeah. screen. No, it's <laughs> not. OK, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Uh, so before uh, diving into propeller, uh, let's take a quick look of uh, what a post link optimizer is. So I think in the previous talk, this topic is already thoroughly covered. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I think uh, in the previous talk, uh, this topic is already thoroughly covered, but just, just a quick, quick recap. Uh, so a post link optimizer takes in an optimized kernel and its profile, and based on the input, it calculates a series of optimization steps and directly apply the optimization on top of the input binary. And the result is the improved version of, uh, of the input. And the post-link optimizer usually does not require source code to work. Uh, it uses a disassembler to lift the machine instruction code in the binary to some form of uh, compiler, compiler IR. And does, the, and does the analysis and optimizing job on the compiler IR level. And finally, the compiler, compiler IR is lowered to machine instruction again result, uh, to construct the final output. And the propeller is conceptually a post-link optimizer. But in, pra in practice, propeller uh, adopts a different approach uh, it leverages the compiler and the linker to do the trans transformation work. So this picture illustrates the, the, uh, how, how propeller works. So just like a post-link optimizer, propeller uses uh, a optimized binary and a profile to identify a series of uh, optimization opportunities. Uh, but instead of uh, directly uh, applying the optimizations, Propeller stops here. It writes the optimization instructions to a pair of compiler and uh, link profiles. Then Propeller reinitiates the build steps using the same source code and the additional uh, compiler profile and the link profile. So the compiler and the linker do their original jobs, but, it, but they also execute optimization instructions that are recorded in the CC profile and the link profile. So the ultimate outcome is the same as a post-link optimizer, but through a distinct process set utilizing the compiler and the linker. Uh, so why bother with a new paradigm? Uh, because there are uh, two issues we found while we experimenting with a uh, post-link optimizer. So firstly, uh, we found that a disassembler does not always work with all the binaries. For example, binaries with uh, read-only data intertwined with, 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 uh, with code, or binaries that must adhere to some regulations like the FIPS, the Federal Information Processing uh, uh, Standard. The second issue is that uh, we face scalability challenges. Uh, the single machine multi-threaded multi uh, design of the op uh, uh, post-link optimizer uh, leads to excessive processing time and memory usage. So we decided to shift some of the optimization burdens from the post-link optimizer to the compiler and the linker. 
so there are a few uh, advantages of doing this. So first of all, uh, we, we make sure that the optimization transformation is done with utmost accuracy because the compiler and the linker are born to do such transformations. So we fully believe their ability to do accurate transformations. Secondly, uh, this opens a uh, door for parallelism because each compilation job is independent. Uh, thirdly, uh, this enables us to use the distributed uh, build cache because why a compiler found there's no instruction, no optimization instructions for a particular source file, it can skip recompiling and just uh, use the cached object file. And lastly, I think uh, this can uh, avoid dealing with some binary intricacies like the, like the kernel metadata. So everything is handled by the tool chain, by the compiler and by the linker. The propeller itself does not uh, deal with such intricacies. Uh, of course, uh, this has some, some cons. For example, it needs source code to work, and it also needs to re redo, uh, redo, re rebuild, the, uh, rebuild the kernel images. Uh, currently, in the propeller framework, we have two uh, major optimizations. One is the basic block layout. The other is the path cloning. We are also actually working on bringing inter-procedural register allocation to propeller. This is a work in progress. Okay, yeah, this, uh, this, this picture illustrates the propeller workflow. So very similar to AutoFDO. So the input is a uh, kernel, uh, optimized kernel that's built with the best uh, optimization available. And we put the optimized kernel to load test or to production. Then we draw, some, then we draw the raw perf data from the production and use a distinguished tool to convert the raw perf data to propeller profiles. Then we restart the build process with the original source and with the additional CC profile and the link profiles. The result is an optimized kernel that is ready to, to be deployed. So some, some of you may already notice that this whole process is isomorphic to the AutoFDO or IFDO uh, workflow. Yes, that's true. The only difference uh, between this workflow and the AutoFDO workflow is that uh, is the command line used to convert the profiles uh, and the compiler flags and the link flags that's uh, taking the profiles. So once we have this in mind, it is uh, straightforward to stack propeller on top of IF, uh, on top of AutoFDO. So this is a, a, a diagram showing the whole process. This is basically a three-step uh, three uh, build. So the first line uh, corresponds to the first step. Actually, it is a workflow of, for AutoFDO. So the input to the first row is a optimized kernel that built with the best available optimizing skill uh, technique. The out output of the first row is a AutoFDO profile. The second row corresponding to the propeller workflow. The input is a optimized binary, and in this case, the input is a AutoFDO optimized binary that uses the AutoFDO profile generated in the first row. And the output of the second row is a set of propeller profiles. In the final step, we just combine everything. We use the original source code. We use the AutoFDO profile in the, second, in the first row and the propeller profiles from the second rows. We rebuild everything using these three things. And the result is, is a kernel that optimizes using AutoFDO and the propeller. Okay, yeah, uh, propeller not, uh, not, can, not only can optimize the kernel image itself, it can also optimize kernel modules. So currently, uh, post-link optimizer works for executable and shared libraries, but kernel modules are uh, from a different camp because kernel modules are not executable nor shared libraries. They are half-baked binaries. They contain uh, unresolved static relocations. 
So when when a kernel loads a module, kernel module, it first decides the target address to load. Then the kernel resolves the static link relocation using the target address. And the propeller adopts the similar approach to resolve relocations in the kernel modules. But instead of uh, calculating the target address, it just uses the target address from the perf date file. Uh, for bu when building applications, propeller, we, when building applications using propeller, we usually add a dash of unique internal linkage names to distinguish static functions that have same names across different uh, compilation source. But for kernels, we decided not to do so because uh, kernel have, kernels have assumptions about function names. So instead, we, we use uh, source files, source file information from debug information to distinguish such names. So this means uh, for propeller to work on kernel, it, needs, it requires uh, dash g for the, for the kernel. Uh, in addition to AutoFDO, Propeller also works very well with IFDO, IFDO, CNLTO, et cetera. Uh, in this slide, I want to talk about uh, pro, uh, uh, Propeller profiles. So Rome already mentioned that AutoFDO profiles offer some flexibility by tolerating minor source code variations or even different build options. But Propeller Profiles has zero tolerance for source code or build setting changes. So the, source code, the source code and build settings must be identical to those that are used during the profile generation. Uh, we, are, we, are working, we, are, we are working hard to try to uh, mitigate this uh, limitation, but this is still a, a work in, pro, in progress. Okay, yeah, uh, Propeller requires uh, specific software and hardware support. Uh, so currently, uh, Propeller requires a distinguished tool that lives outside of the LVM source tree. Presently, we are working on migrating the functionality into LVM source tree. Secondly, it requires hardware to deliver the branch information. The, the branch information can be obtained from Intel LBR, from AMD's BRS or AMD's LBR extension version two. On ARM, this branch information data can be synthesized using either ARM SP or ARM ETM. Internally, we have already fully validated propeller optimized kernel using branch information gathered from LBR. Also, we have validated internal applications using, using branch data obtained from Intel BR, AMD BRS, and RMSP. So we are working hard to expand the support on uh, two different architectures. Yeah, this is the heat map for Propeller. So previous slides have already shown three, the first three columns. The, this slide adds a fourth column, that's uh, IFDO with CFTO with, with Propeller. We can see that uh, this fourth column further narrows the instruction band. This instruction band totally disappears here. And here, this instruction band is narrowed to a single solid line. We have also plotted the kernel PMU stats for CLTO and uh, Propeller. Uh, so the CLTO and the Propeller together uh, reduces the instruction count and the branches. But CLTO is mostly responsible for the reduction in instruction count. Propeller is mostly responsible for the re reduction in taken branches. So currently, we have uh, sent patches for enabling AutoFDO and the Propeller to the upstream for, for review. And internally, we are doing large-scale production tests to measure the performance company-wide. <coughs> we are also investigating customer kernels based on specific workload. So that means uh, we are 
using different profiles collected from different workloads to build different kernels for different applications. So to, to summarize, uh, FDO, whether it is the auto FDO or instrumented FDO, they improve kernel performance significantly. An auto FDO can integ integrate with kernel build very well. It's easier to deploy, and it can be profiled from production. This is a huge benefit over the traditional instrumented FDO. And auto FDO can get most of the FDO performance, or even better, in case once there is no representative workload for a instrumented FDO kernel. So to get the best possible uh, performance from uh, these techniques, we advise to add a propeller on top of um, AutoFDO. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, we have still have time for questions, yeah. Um, so, sorry, this is a question for the first half. Um, first half, yeah. In, so in iterative release mode, how do you deal with function name changes? What's that? Yeah. For iterative uh, release mode for uh -huh. AutoFDO, how do you deal with function name changes? Uh, function name change, actually the compiler has the support. It can pass the uh, list uh, to change the names. They can remap the old name to the new names. We have this support. But okay. you have user need to manually add this. So you, oh. how will the compiler know the old name? The user provide this list, the name. Oh, mapping. okay, the user needs to provide. Yeah. Okay, and just uh, I think in the third last slide, uh, I saw that the ITLB misses went up by 25%. Who's curious? Yeah, ITLB is like uh, uh, for the we use a napper. It has a very small footprint, so the ITLB probably just noise. It's a very small yeah footprint. So I'm still utterly confused by what Propeller is and why it needs a second profile. Um, why can't it use the same profile as the Auto FDO? And why do you need to do a post-link optimization pass if you already have all the information to do a link time optimization pass? The whole thing makes no sense to me whatsoever. Yeah, you answer, uh, you've you've yeah, talked a lot about what it does, but you have said nothing about why it does something silly like this. So let me try to answer this. Uh, so uh, the profile, when you, say, oh, when you say profile is accurate, it means uh, uh, when you do the, uh, when you read the, uh, when you do the, for example, instrument, uh, for auto have the profile is accurate at the point of you read in, the, the counters. So it means, uh, for example, for AutoFDO, the profile accurate in the final stage of compilations. But we are going to use this profile in early stage of compilations. You need to do backward propagate, propagation. So when you back propagation, then you do optimizations based on these profiles. You change the, change the IRs. You cannot do the mapping. So. You have to do this uh, sequentially. You have to do like uh, two rounds of uh, optimizations. Basically, if you do the optimizing early, you change your code after this, and you lose the profile information. So you have to redo the uh, uh, profile connection to see the uh, profiles after the transformation. Then this is called uh, uh, accurate profiles. Does this make sense? <sighs> <laughs> but then you transform it again, so then you would need to redo your... Yeah, so if you so get the best possible performance, you have to do this uh, but more than two times. More times is better. Right, so yeah. it's an iterative process, but that still does not explain why you think it's a post-link optimization pass. Why isn't it inside the linker at link time optimization? Uh, you mean the uh, propeller? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. so I don't understand the whole propeller thing. Propeller, as presented, makes no sense to me. Uh, you think of where the uh, optimization applies? Uh, post-link? It's actually not post-link. 
Okay, good, <laughs> because you all started with, with introducing post-link optimization, like Bolt. I mean, Bolt mm -hmm. is a post-link optimizer. And then you started the whole propeller talk with what's a post-link optimizer, and then you say it's not a post-link. So why did you say that? Because it's the post-link information. It, it feed back the link, uh, uh, link information get from the linker back to the compiler. <sighs> yeah, the profile data is post-link, but it's not actually post-link optimization. It's just profile-guided optimization. So call it that. <laughs> Um, how does this apply with mitigations? So there are a lot of mitigations in the Linux kernel code, for instance, red pauline or RSB stuff in that is there, but it shouldn't be executed. So if you look at LBR, for instance, mm -hmm. you're never going to see the code coming from there. Yes. But it needs to be there just to trick the prediction, the return prediction or the target buffer prediction. So is that preserved when you do uh, this type of optimization? Or no, is that removed somehow because that code is never executed? So the compiler won't see this. For example, the study keys or this uh, stuff, we are not seeing this. Uh, we, when we look at this, uh, the, uh, the, the profiles, we see the no ops. We just uh, filter all these uh, profile counts. We are not dealing with, the compiler is not dealing with this. But when you are profiling, you see that the part of the code is never executed, right? Yeah. And what do you do with that? We do nothing about that. You keep yeah. it there? Yeah, keep it there. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you need to rebuild your program to profile for propeller? Or is like special flags needed? Yeah, we, 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 need, uh, we, we need a special flag that's inject uh, propeller metadata in the binary, but that's not part of the runtime. Yeah, so just like uh, dash, dash WL dash E to inject relocation information. Okay. Yeah. And so propeller doesn't see inline assembly at all, right? So there's no opportunity for optimization there. Uh, yeah, cor correct. Okay. Yeah, don't yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, we don't assembly do assembly or inline assembly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what compiler does? It skips optimizing to uh, like inline assembly. Let me think. I don't think so. Yeah, I. I mean, it depends on optimizations. I think most high level, we, we don't. Yeah, we yeah. don't. We don't see anything. Mm. Maybe some machine levels, uh, people optimizations. Because at some point you're doing basic block reordering, does yeah. it, and of course, uh, unless you know that a particular knob can be converted to jump, like you, you cannot properly reorder. So do you yeah. skip the whole function or do you skip like We skip this? the basic block. We but don't. you don't know the limits for this basic block, well, right? Yeah, we just filter out uh, if there's edge coming from no off, we just uh, skip this. Uh, but if there's no edge, yeah. where do you see the edge? No, Let's the profile will ha see the edge. Yeah, but what does, if the profile mm -hmm. uh, didn't have the, the edge. The profile this edge, but all the new profiles, so we eliminate this edge. Right, but let's say the profile, this knob was never converted to jump, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no edge in the profile. Yeah, no edge in the profile. So this will be just like one basic block. Yeah, one basic block, yeah. But it can became, it can become like two basic blocks at some other execution rate. The profile is actually, uh, for instrumentation-based FDO, we see the basic block level, but mm -hmm. for auto no, no, I understand. I mean, there could be different runs, right? Mm -hmm. you, you cannot capture every single execution possible, right, in your yeah. training. So, okay. So my question is, like, how do you understand that it's, like, two basic blocks, not one basic blocks with a knob? Uh, two basic blocks, one basic block in the no op. Uh, but what does that uh, mean? We don't touch these basic blocks, even one or two basic blocks. What does that matter? Okay. Yeah, uh, we don't touch this. But, this, okay. I guess I'll give it. We're doing this for more. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So we have.